favored, flavored, anointed, appointed. It's a good night to die. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. God is faithful. I'm glad a couple of you know it. Faithful when? All the time. <laughs> Praise God. Romans chapter 8. Verse 1. Let's speak it. Romans 8, verse 1. Is everybody there? Praise God. I'm getting there. There we go. There is there, therefore now no what? Condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in in the, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, everyone say requirement, requirement. of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Okay, again, it's very important that we get an understanding. He says there's no condemnation to those who are walking according to the spirit, but there is condemnation to those who are walking according to the flesh. Amen. In verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh, in other words, who live according to the worldliness, set their minds on the things of the flesh or on the things of the world. But those who live according to the spirit, they set their minds on the things of the spirit. In other words, they're looking, they're setting their minds on the areas of eternity, not temporary, or else you're in the flesh. It's real simple. People are still living for themselves. They set them, they are always thinking about themselves. So they're constantly in that arena. They're setting themselves in the area of worldliness. Is everybody okay? He says in verse 6, for to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, the worldly mind is enmity against God. In other words, it is rebellious towards the things of God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh, in the carnal, cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. In other words, or if you're not cooperating with the spirit of Christ, you're not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. In other words, because you are cooperating with the spirit, you are denying yourself and your body is becoming dead. The ways of sin no longer have dominion over you. Your desires are no longer according to the desires of the world. They're according to the desires that please God. But the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. Because the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Again, those in the spirit, in other words, they desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit, or what we call those in the spirit, there is a specific, he calls it a law. There is a perfect law. Everyone say perfect law. Perfect law. In the spirit, there is what we call a perfect law. And we're going to talk about that perfect law in a minute. It is the perfect law that is obeyed to bring life eternal into a mortal or temporary body. As you are obeying the spirit, in other words, you are submitting to the perfect law that he has for me and you. It is also called the spirit of life or the spirit of the law of life. Okay, so again, by cooperating with the perfect law of the Spirit, you will manifest the fruits of righteousness. I'm going to say that again. By cooperating with the perfect law of the Spirit, you will manifest the fruits of righteousness, fueling life eternal in a mortal body. Does everybody get it? You will actually fuel this. Okay, so by cooperating with the perfect law, 
you will manifest the fruit of righteousness, which is, the, which is fueling the life eternal in a mortal body. Why? Because you're rejecting the worldly laws. You're rejecting everything that will come against God in every area. Now, rejecting the perfect law of the Spirit will result in lust and love of the world. In other words, and it'll also put you back into the carnal or the flesh of the old man. We'll talk more about this perfect law, but there is a perfect law in the Spirit. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36 and 24. Hallelujah. He says, I'll take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Every one of us here is an immigrant, but we're legal. And then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness and from all of your what? Idols. He says, I'm going to give you a new heart, and I'm going to put a new spirit within you. And I'll take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I'll put what? My spirit within you. I will put my spirit. Look, uh, uh, grab hold of this. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is a perfect law. There's a perfect law. I will put my spirit within you and I will cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. In other words, you're going you're gonna to do the law, that perfect law in the spirit. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. I'll deliver you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and multiply it and I will bring no famine upon you. Praise God. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase of all your fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. He says, I will put my spirit in you. I'll cause you to obey the perfect law of the spirit or the perfect law of life. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrew 10. In verse 15. The perfect law. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, for after he had said before, and this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my what? My laws into their what? hearts and into their minds I will write them in other words or into your soul into your spirit again he's talking about this perfect law that's why it says but the Holy Spirit also witnesses it is a perfect law of the spirit of the living God he has a perfect law for me and you he said um, and I'll write them in their hearts and in their minds and then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. No more. Why? Because you are performing the perfect law. Now where there is remission of, of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with true, a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with what? Pure water. Pure water. Again, he talks about the law and he talks about consecrate, consecration or, or sanctification by the Spirit. In Psalm 19, and that is a perfect law that the spirit carries is everybody there Amen. let's read it together verse 7 
The law is what? The law of the Lord is perfect. What law is he talking about? He's talking about the law of the Spirit, which is known as a perfect law. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise is simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing in the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover by them your servant is warned. In other words, he is warning us about this perfect law. He's saying if by submitting to the perfect law of the Spirit, you will have great reward. Look it. And in keeping them, there is a what? Great reward. You're going, well, what is the law of the Spirit? I'll tell you in a minute. The law of the Lord is perfect. The, law, the Lord is Spirit. His law is perfect. It is the life in the Spirit. And again, we are warned in keeping it. There is great reward, right? 2 Corinthians 3. It's a perfect law of life in the spirit. Life what? Life eternal. 2 Corinthians 3. The Lord is spirit. Hallelujah. The law of the Lord is perfect. In verse 12, 2 Corinthians 3, 12, Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. Now, you've got to remember, God sent his Christ. Amen? He sent his Christ. The Christ is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. It's his, his, his character. It's his spirit. He sent his Christ into the world. In fact, in the Christ, there is a perfect law. Jesus had to obey the perfect law that was given to him. He had to fulfill it. And obey the perfect law. It was the perfect law of the spirit. By that. As he obeyed and did what he had to do. He fulfilled the mission and did the will of God. The spirit of the living God. Was, had access to every single one of us. Any human being. Willing to accept Jesus. Repent for their sins. And ask for the next gift. Besides salvation. Of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Where the perfect law comes forth. With the spirit of the living God. In verse 15, he said, But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is what? Taken away. In other words, the blinders, the hardened heart. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. Why? Because cooperating with the perfect law of the Spirit there's always freedom. Always. Is everybody all right? Amen. James 1. Praise God. Praise God. James 1, verse 21. Everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. James 1, verse 21. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers over the word. Be what? Doers over the word. That's movement. That's action. To be a doer of the word. You always wanted to. Why? Because the word is what's telling you what pleases God. Amen. 
Be a doer of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's an idiot. I mean, he's, he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the what? Into the what? The perfect law of liberty. In other words, the perfect law of the spirit. Does everybody get it? He who looks into the perfect law in the spirit and continues in it. And is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be what? Blessed in whatever he does. So he's always referencing this perfect law. This perfect law of the spirit of life. This perfect, wonderful law that Jesus himself had to cooperate and became the example for me and you so that we will cooperate with that perfect law which will manifest righteousness and freedom. It will manifest the fruits of righteousness. Amen? So he's saying, lay aside all filthiness. In other words, become separated, become sanctified. Laying aside. When he talks about laying aside things, he's saying, get away from these things and come over to me and become sanctified. Lay aside of all filthiness, worldliness, lust, and be doers and get sanctified by obeying the perfect law of the Spirit. Because by obeying the perfect law of the Spirit, you will become sanctified. It is the law of eternal life by sanctification of the Spirit, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We'll start at verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and how to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. Your what? Your what? Sanctification. Sanctification. Now, sanctification is going to become a reality as you obey the perfect law and cooperate with it. That you should abstain from what? Sexual immorality. Why? Because it will destroy sanctification. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in what? Sanctification and honor. Verse 5. Not in what? Passion of lust. Like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness but in what? Holiness. Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man. But God who has also given us the Holy Spirit. Powerful. So he's saying this is obedience to the perfect law will bring sanctification and it will bring newness of heart and newness of mind. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is always renewing me and you. He's renewing us. He's bringing things. In fact, the word renew means to bring to remembrance so that we can refocus on all things that are pertaining to God. So we can reset our thoughts again on the things eternal. So we can go back of living from the future to the present and not from the past to the present. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the what? Sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. Now, is, perf is that perfect law truth that he's talking about? Yes. In other words, so there's going to be sanctification by the Spirit by belief and cooperation in this perfect law. To which he called you, 
by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Like a sanctification by the Spirit, belief in the truth or in the perfect law brings multiple things. The first thing it's going to do is bring rest. It's going to bring what? Rest. The next thing it's going to bring is peace. It will bring revelation. When revelation comes, it always brings vision. So bring rest, peace, revelation, vision. It will establish divine order. And prosperity. Write it. So rest, peace, revelation, divine uh, vision, divine order, and what else? Prosperity. By what? Obeying the perfect law. The perfect law of the spirit of life. Are you ready for the perfect law? Mark 8. The perfect law of the spirit of life, by cooperating with the perfect law of the spirit of life, you are going to manifest the fruits of righteousness. You will walk in freedom. The Holy Spirit will constantly renew you. You will have rest, peace, revelation, vision, divine order, and prosperity. Oh, glory. Mark 8, 31. And as Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests, scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, get behind me, Satan. Now, Peter had good intentions, but they were wrong. How many of y'all know sometimes good intentions are wrong? <laughs> For you are not mindful of the things of God. Why? Because the enemy was using him to interfere with the mission that Jesus had to fulfill. In fact, he was trying to prevent Jesus from fulfilling the perfect law. He said, you're mindful of things of, you're not mindful of the things of God, but you're only mindful of the things of what? Men. And when he had called the people to himself with his disciples, also he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That is the law of the Spirit. Does everybody get it? That is the law of the Spirit. If everybody who is a believer would fulfill that law in everything that they do, they would manifest the fruits of the Spirit, they would have no problems. Of course, there would be trials and tribulations to continue to purify you. You wouldn't be blaming everybody else for your stuff. Does everybody get it? Again, we would have rest, peace, revelation, vision, divine order, and prosperity. So when those things are not manifesting, it's because an individual is not fulfilling and cooperating with the perfect law, which is to deny yourself pick up the cross or pick up the sword and fight and follow. Does everybody get this? This is the perfect law. Why? Because people are still putting themselves first. They're still putting their feelings first before everything. And look at That's where people are not putting God first. The only way you can put God first is if you're not first. 
If you're first in everything, you can't put God first. It's impossible. Well, I need, I, there's three eyes and you're out. I, 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 I. I call it a demonic pizza, right? I think for not, Frank Sinatra sang a song, something about I did it my way. I don't know where he ended up. Hallelujah. Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 16. So when you see where he says walking in the spirit, it means that you are cooperating with the perfect law. Does everybody get it? And by cooperating with the perfect law, you will manifest righteousness. Bring sanctification. You are no longer living for you. Does everybody get this? It's not about how much money you make. It's not about how much money you save. It's not about what you're doing here or there or whatever. You're no longer living for you. In fact, you are laboring for him. So that as you labor for him, you're asking him everything. Lord, what do I do? That's why he says, acknowledge me in all of your ways. And I'll what? I'll direct your steps, cast your cares about, I'll establish your thoughts. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you. This is all about denying ourselves. Every single, from the moment you get up. Because the moment you get up, you're still, your old man is alive. He wants to outrun you. He wants to get going. He wants worry, fear, anxiety, stress, oppression, heaviness. All of those things are associated with the old man, not the new man. The new man is filled with joy, peace, righteousness. Hallelujah. Power. Denying yourself. Man, you should hate your old man. It's almost like hating yourself. Does everybody get it? Sometimes you need to look in the mirror and go, get behind me. I mean, you need to throw out the mirror, I think. Galatians 5, 16, what does it say? I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why? Because you are cooperating with the perfect law. Which is what? Denying yourself. Picking up the sword of the spirit and battling. That's the cross. So that you are able to follow. Look at you can go to 65 Bible studies a day and still blow it. Does everybody know? You can go to every convention and everything and still not deny yourself. <laughs> See, there's that area where we've got a common relationship where we know that we know that we are denying ourselves. No, no fear. God's not giving me a spirit of fear. No lust. No. None of the works of the flesh. No. No old man. In fact, you need to put cement shoes on the old man. I say, then walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusts against the spirit. So there's a law that's in your flesh, that is battling the law of the spirit. The law of the flesh, the end result is death. But the law of the spirit of life is eternity. And it brings you power within you. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So you do not do the things that you desire or you wish because you're dead. So when somebody says, man, I'm going to kill you. You tell them, man, you can't kill something that's already dead. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law of the flesh. Does everybody get it? Now, the works of the flesh are, of course, evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, self, I said selfish ambitions, 
dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because they are not cooperating with the perfect law. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, control over yourself. Against such there is no law. Of what? Law of the flesh, which is death. And those who are Christ, see what he's saying about Christ, those who are Christ, you can't be Christ unless you're cooperating with the perfect law. Those are the ones that are labeled. Those that are called the Christ are the ones that are cooperating with the perfect law. Which is what? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Those are the Christ. And those who are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with its what? Passions and desires. Oh, glory. If we live in the Spirit, we shall what? Walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another so that we don't deny ourselves. Amen? Philippians 2. I don't think the I don't I I I don't not I don't believe that it's not emphasized enough about the perfect law. See, when you're dead, there's no arguments. There's no complaining. Dead people do not complain. Never heard one complain yet. There's no jealousy in dead people. There's no lust in them either. Philippians 2, verse 1. In fact, they do not consider themselves first. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, what's Christ associated with? You can't be considered in Christ if you're not what? Cooperating with the law. If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, look at it, if there's fellowship with the Spirit, you're cooperating with the law. If any affection and mercy fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambitions or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Look at Jesus came and denied himself. He picked up the cross, and he fulfilled the mission that God sent him to do. In fact, that's the reason why he had to pray three times. That's why he's known as the way, the truth, and the life, because he had to fulfill the law of denying yourself, picking up the cross, and following. He had to fight. Jesus did not just die on the cross. He died in the garden. That's where the first blood began to become shed. He shed his own blood first. It says that he prayed so hard that blood became to come out of it. His sweat was blood. So blood already started in the garden. He said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider Robert to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Hello, that's called denying yourself. People want reputations. I don't give a hoot what people think of me. The only one I care about is what he thinks. Well, I just don't like how you preach. Too bad. Get behind me. <laughs> you get in front of me, I may run you over. But make him, he made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of, a, of man. 
And being found in appearance as a man, he did what? He humbled himself. Man, listen, you can't humble yourself without denying yourself. He humbled himself and became what? Obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that is, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. What does he mean by working out your salvation? Cooperating with the law. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. All right, are you ready now? Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. I'm going to share something with you. Many people fall, backslide, because they're not fulfilling that law or cooperating with that law. Because by rejecting that law, pride comes. And the word says pride goes before what? Fall. That, and a fall just doesn't mean going back to do drugs or whatever. A fall means that you have rejected the call of your life. You've rejected the will of God to do what you're supposed to do. See, it's not about going back and using or whatever and fornicating. Not that that's not a part of it. That's also it. But it's more than that. It's about being rebellious and uh, shutting the voice of God off in your life. That's pride. Is everybody okay? So you and I must maintain the perfect law of the spirit of life, which brings what? Freedom. Second Peter 1. Hallelujah. Second Peter won, won, and he won. Would you read it with me, please? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of dispersion in Pontus, Galatia. Is everybody with me? Okay, 2 Peter chapter 1, get behind me. <laughs> Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by the glory and virtue. Now, wait a minute. What is the, who is the carrier of divine power? The Holy Spirit. Has everybody got it? Remember, okay, so if the Holy Spirit is the carrier who is the divine power, then the law of the Spirit of life is always with the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get this? So if he's always with the Holy Spirit, when you and I are asked to be filled with the Spirit, he is trying to bring me and you to the area of denying ourselves, picking up the cross, and following. That's what his function and purpose is, is to continue to kill me and you. Has everybody got it? Why? So Christ could be manifested. Okay. He's called us, all right, verse, verse 4, by which have been been given to us exceedingly and great what precious promises that through these you may be what partakers of the divine nature oh wow 
having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So is the divine nature going to be manifested in you if you are cooperating with the perfect law of the spirit of life? Yes. See, most people don't even realize that they're really not wrestling with the devil. They're wrestling with God. Many times people think they're wrestling with the devil, and it's actually God they're wrestling with. Why? Because God is trying to bring us to a place of denying ourselves, and people are still fighting for themselves. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to, your vir to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For these things are yours and abound. If these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. In other words, he has stopped cooperating with the perfect law. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We become partakers of the divine nature, divine order, divine favor. Again, we will be blessed. Does everybody get it? I'm going to close at Peter 3. Uh, I mean, Philippians 3, sorry. Philippians 3. I guess I won't close it, Peter. I'll close it, Flip. I'll close that, Philip. Philippians 3. Hallelujah. Oh, man, this is good stuff. In verse 8. Oh, verse 7, sorry. Are you ready? Amen. Let's grow for it. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for what? For Christ. In other words, he was confessing by cooperating with the perfect law. I've realized I've gained so much more of God, relationship, that everything else doesn't matter anymore. Yet indeed I also count all things what? Loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Man, if we could all grab hold of that. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law of the flesh, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and a fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means my attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I what? I press on. I walk away. I walk away from the world. That I may lay hold of that which is Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count myself to apprehended but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal this even to you. <laughs> Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us become the same mind. Brethren, join in following my example. Note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and, not tell you, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Why? Because they're rejecting the perfect law, which is the perfect law of the spirit of life. In other words, they're not denying themselves. 
whose end is what? Destruction. Whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things or worldly things. So you know they're not denying themselves. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. The perfect law. It is the perfect law which brings perfection. It brings death to me and you, but it brings peace joy and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. It brings revelation and vision and sight. It brings so much more. For you know that the world cannot fulfill you at all. And you know you are very sensitive now because there's so much deception going on that you're awake to it. You know that you know that you know. And you know that you can easily be swayed. So we become discerning, seeing things through, hearing things through, and repenting very quickly when we step on the law instead of obeying it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Remember, it is the perfect law, the spirit of life of Christ that is in our mortal body, waiting to take over for an immortal body to we all become one in the spirit of eternity. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. And let the spirit of the perfect law of Christ Jesus continue to manifest in us and through us that we may be well-pleasing to you of good works and expressing your divine nature. Help us, Lord. Give us the power of the divine power so that we can deny ourselves, pick up the cross, battle, and follow you every day. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.